Good. Okay, let's do this video. I'm ready. All too often, Santa Cruz is not moving. Right, James. During school months, the roads to and from the university are jammed for blocks. Yeah, the buses I ride are stopped in traffic. Gridlock is an everyday occurrence. It's anxiety-producing and wasteful for motorists, really unpleasant for residents, and it adds pollution. As you can see, the city is fully built out. Expansion of streets is not an option. We cannot accommodate more cars. Yet we depend on tourism that brings more cars. And Caitlin, during the tourist season, it's very time-consuming to drive to the beach. I've flown 5,000 miles to come here. My word, I just never knew I was going to see so many cars on the road. That's a real shame. We've just traveled down from a friend's house along Westcliff, and it's taken us half an hour just to drive one mile. Oh, look at them. It's just full of cars. I'm just thinking that we're having an integrated system where people can visit their favorite places without bringing all the pollution to Santa Cruz, to this beautiful marine sanctuary. This video examines the need for new options and explores the PRT option. With personal rapid transit, people enter a station, step into a waiting car which seats three or four people, a bicycle or a wheelchair, pay with a card, and indicate via a computerized system where they want to go. Here we show what a great asset PRT can be for seniors. For people using a wheelchair or a walker, it makes lots more areas of the community available. Whether it's for students, seniors, or other non-drivers, PRT is great for anyone who doesn't drive. What is our community saying about transportation in Santa Cruz? A 2003 Master Transportation Study, which was jointly funded by the University and the City, concluded that Santa Cruz's traffic is expected to increase by 19% by the year 2020. Vehicle hours of delay will increase by 92%. And that study did not factor in proposed UCSC expansion and growth plans. Every morning and every afternoon on school days, the traffic here is an absolute nightmare. The city has to do better for its residents. All of these cars are going up a single-lane road on High Street to the University. When the latest UCSC growth plan was first brought to the City Council in 2006, long-term City Council member Mike Rotkin assessed its impact. Take the issue of traffic. What's the impact of adding 2,000 more people in cars on the street that's already impacted? Fixing intersections is, does not and cannot mitigate this problem. What's needed is a sort of quantum leap to another form of transportation system. Either, you know, some kind of a new kind of mass transit. Adding new buses doesn't work because they're stuck in the same traffic. So even if you, if you could put, as Ron Marquez was suggesting, uh, more buses on the road, you're going nowhere. They're all just sitting there and not moving. So the only possible mitigations here would be something very different than the current transportation system. We could do something like airports and some large cities have done. They're using large people movers. But thoughtful planners now realize that something much smaller and more economical will work even better for small cities. Such as the PRT alternative, which, as it turns out, has been available for decades. The basic principles of PRT were demonstrated in the 1970s. Cabin Taxi was a fully developed PRT system funded by the German Ministry of Research and Technology. Tests were conducted on a 1.2-mile track with six stations and 24 operating vehicles. Cabin Taxi's unique over and under guideway provides more passenger service on the same single guideway. Like all the PRT systems, all the moving switch elements are on board, and the vehicles can move through a switch point with a minimum separation of two seconds, thus boosting transportation capacity. Guide wheels switch the vehicle safely from one track to another, and for a requested stop to the next station. Wide doors offer ample room for you to enter the vehicle and even move bulky articles. Route maps of the station help to locate your destination. You select a number to input your destination code. Here you insert a coin and take your ticket. The vacant cabin is waiting for you at the platform.
The destination will be reached with no intermediate stops and no interfering street traffic. At the destination, the vehicle stops. The door unlocks automatically. And you can leave the station via stairway or elevator. The cabin taxi system was not implemented due to the decision to deploy a medium-range missile system. But utilizing the existing cabin taxi documentation, upgrades in software, control technology, and vehicle design, a modern cabin taxi can certainly be built today. In the U.S., PRT was first demonstrated in Morgantown, West Virginia. This PRT system has been successfully and safely operated for over 30 years. It has carried close to 10 million passengers without serious injuries and without substantial interruptions in service. Typically, 16,000 people ride this PRT system every day. They enjoy far better on-time service. Most importantly, Morgantown PRT succeeded in eliminating gridlock in the center of the city. I kept hearing about that uh, system. It's the only one in the world been in operation for over 35 years. My son and I went to see it firsthand. You've been watching our video record of our ride on the Morgantown PRT. The layout is quite similar to Santa Cruz's uh, proposed PRT system. It connects the downtown uh, with its university campus with the big campus up on the hill. An ultra PRT system is in operation at the world's third busiest airport, London's Heathrow, which sees some 60 million passengers per year, or more than 180,000 passengers every day. The purpose of today is to move as many people as possible in a short space of time. It is to prove that this system is capable of moving 48 people in under five minutes. Why did you decide to go for it? Um, several reasons, really. Uh, I think the main one is the environmental benefits that it brings, because there's no emissions at the point of use, so it's very green. And secondly, it's a really good passenger service as well. You don't have to wait for the system. Um, it's your own personal space, and it's fun. Phil, if there's no driver, how is this thing controlled? Well, it's a very clever system that we've got on there, and we've got a number of overlaying uh, sets of controls. We've got lasers which work out where it is along, along the guideway. We've got a number of reference points on the guideway so the vehicle can always work out how far it's got on its journey and therefore it knows exactly when to turn left, turn right, when to accelerate, when to slow down and when to arrive in a berth. And ready to go, our journey begins at the push of a button. It's incredibly quiet. It's smooth. It feels like you're being driven. It doesn't feel like you're on trams or trails or tracks or anything like that. Well, folks, the future has arrived. That felt completely weird, but it was brilliant fun. Mazdar in the United Arab Emirates has a PRT system running daily. Please take your seat and press the green go button to start your trip. It was built by a company called To Get There, which was formerly called Frog and based in the Netherlands. In Uppsala, Sweden, the Posco Steel Company has partnered with the Swedish government to build the Vectis PRT system near Stockholm. Vectis uses more modern PRT concepts in that it has a completely elevated guideway and does not use concrete platforms. Along with the usual set of wheels on conventional cars, there are horizontal guide wheels and switching wheels. These additional wheels enable the special automation that makes PRT so uniquely efficient. These small metal boxes are linear motors, unlike the round motors we are used to seeing. They provide efficient propulsion from the guideway and don't weigh down the car. Like all PRT designs, the stations are offline. Other cars going to other destinations don't stop. PRT stations need only be as simple as a bus stop. Cars merge like on a freeway, and thus a surprisingly large number of people can move on a relatively small guideway. Because cars can closely follow one another, a single guideway can move up to 6,000 people per hour. 
Do you know, James, that Vectus is about to begin an expansion of the system into the surrounding community? Cool. Cabin Taxi, Morgantown, London Heathrow, Mazdar, and Uppsala all prove that PRT works. Now we should ask whether PRT can be adapted to smaller communities, like Santa Cruz. The answer is most emphatically yes. And what might PRT in Santa Cruz look like? Where would it run? From any point on this system, you can get to any other point on this system nonstop. What if you could go between the university, downtown, and the boardwalk in under 10 minutes, even during rush hour, or during the height of tourist season, at any time of the day or night? What if you never had to wait more than a minute or so to catch your ride? Sure, you might keep your car, you might still drive, but you might choose the convenient alternative quite a lot, too. This map shows our proposed PRT system, with the tanned, shaded area being the easy walking and biking distance to the PRT. What if PRT also enhances the bus system? PRT will feed the east-west bus routes, and they will feed the PRT system in effective collaboration. There are other advantages to PRT. PRT costs less than light rail and big people movers. In addition, PRT's operating costs are 25 to 50 percent lower than light rail and would use half as much energy. PRT requires much less land than rail tracks or highway lanes. A PRT installation, as you can see in these comparisons with typical freeway lanes, requires much less space and moves at a dependable and predetermined speed. And because PRT is so safe, there are lower safety and accident costs compared to any other means of transportation, especially cars. Knowing these advantages, would we then spend money on it? Why would we do that? Caitlin, the simple answer is climate change and the increasing cost of using limited fossil fuels. As everyone knows, the price of gas at the pump has more than doubled in the last few years. Nothing dramatizes the shrinking supplies of oil more than this. PRT burns no gas. How can that be? Because, if we're smart, our guideway will have a canopy of solar panels above it. We're killing the planet. We know how we're killing it. We know how to save it. Everything we need to know to save it, we know today. And it's a matter of taking that, having the political will to do it, and then, and this is the key, having the capital investment to do it. There is a movement throughout the world for capital investment to be made in those strategies and techniques, tactics, uh, uh, and technologies, which will save the planet. The question is whether community by community we want to be on the cutting edge of that, want to be part of, the, part of that solution early, or want to be in, the, in it later on. Fred Keeley made that comment at the PRT conference in Santa Cruz in 2006. In 2008, the City Council published a Request for Qualifications, an RFQ, for a Santa Cruz PRT system. Interested in qualified PRT companies were asked to respond with their qualifications to design, build, own, and operate a Santa Cruz PRT system. Santa Cruz PRT Incorporated has performed an initial evaluation of the 14 RFQ responses. A preliminary report was presented to the directors of City Public Works, the Transit District, and UCSC Transportation. So, Caitlin, if an investor builder would finance and build a PRT system, what would the city need to do? Well, James, if an investor would design, build, own, and operate a PRT system, the city would only need to provide right-of-way and a draft franchise. 